Hello, Manor Applicators. My name is Jose Hernandez and I am with the University of Minnesota Extension. Welcome to part two of Basics of Manure Management. In this section, we're going to be covering some of the aspects related with nitrine and phosphorus management. To summarize the previous video, we know that manure provides valuable nutrients for crop production. Manure may also cause potential environmental concerns when it is not applied properly. In this video, we're going to identify the importance of nitrine and phosphorus and its role in crop management. We're also going to outline some of the main ways that nitrine and phosphorus become potential risks for the environment. Let's start with nitrine. Nitrine is an essential element for plants and animals. And nitrine is the most limiting nutrient for crop production, meaning that we're required to apply manures or synthetic fertilizers in order to have high crop yields. However, some of the high nitrogen can be toxic in, to animals, especially infants as well as livestock. And we, will also, we have a public health standard for drinking water of 10 parts per million of nitrate nitrogen. Nitrogen is very dynamic and very mobile in the soil. It can be difficult to keep out of the environment because even with very good management, there might be some losses related with leaching and with volatilization, for example. So the chart in the right is showing how nitrogen compounds can be taken by the crop. Some of them might have might be exposed to runoff or erosion. And some of them, some of the compounds might be denitrified or they're gonna be uh, volatilized to the environment. And some of the compounds are also going to be lost in the form of leaching. The nitrogen cycle is very complex and it's not only agricultural systems that have to deal with nitrogen. Uh, we have forests and natural ecosystems like wetlands uh, that will have nitrogen cycling. Uh, when we burn fossil fuels for transportation, we're going to be releasing some of nitrogen compounds. And in the soils, we have many conversions of nitrogen compounds and some of them are going to be some of that some of those compounds are going to be lost to the environment and some others are going to be used by plants and um, and crops one of the issues that we deal with currently in agricultural systems is this dead zone or hypoxic zone in the gulf of mexico so this dead zone in the gulf is caused by excess nitrogen carried by the Mississippi River. And as we can see here, a lot of agriculture in the Midwest is causing this dead zone in the Gulf. So this is nitrogen transported through the Mississippi River, causing excess nutrients in the Gulf. But it's not only an issue of the Gulf of Mexico. Groundwater contamination threatens drinking water supply for over 97% of rural American households. Okay, and the main issue that we have is with infants, as we mentioned before, uh, we can have this baby blue syndrome in nitrate, nitrate contaminated waters. There was a study made by EPA that showed that there were nitrate, nitrate levels in groundwater above that 10 parts per million safety limit in about 25% of the sample wells in 87, 87 counties in the U.S., mostly in the Midwest. There was another study by the USDA that approximately half of the counties in the U.S. have groundwater supplies vulnerable to pesticide and nitrate nitrogen contamination, potentially affecting about 54 million people. Here's a summary of some of the nitrogen components in manure. Most of the manure will have organic nitrogen, which is the organic matter in there, and inorganic nitrogen, which is typically the ammonium in there. And then from there, many transformations can happen. We can have that ammonium being used by plants and microbes, or we can have that ammonium, if we, are not incorpor if we don't incorporate the manure, that ammonium become ammonia and is lost to the environment. Then the ammonium can also become nitrate when it's transformed by soil microorganisms, and the nitrate may leach to the groundwater.
Nitrate leaching is one of the key losses for nitrate management. The idea that we have uh, in, in crop production is that we want to apply nitrate rates that will produce high yields, but we don't want to over apply nitrate. So here's an example where we are showing how if we increase nitrate, nitrate rates, we're going to increase our yields to a point. And if we keep increasing the nitrate applied to that crop, we're not going to have any yield response. The yield response is now flat. However, losses to the environment increase dramatically. So that nitrogen leaching is going to increase them dramatically if we increase the nitrogen rates beyond the optimum application rates. And that's why we have the University of Minnesota provides growers with some guidelines about what is the optimum nitrogen rate for a specific crop. Another concern that we have with manures and losses is ammonia volatilization or the incorporation of manure. In my view, if we don't incorporate manure, if we surface apply manure and we don't incorporate it, a lot of that ammonium is going to be lost in the form of ammonia volatilization. And there, therefore, you're going to be losing some of that nitrogen to the, to the atmosphere, losing money, meaning that you're going to have to come up later and you're going to have to buy more fertilizer. Um, another issue that you might have with without incorporation is air quality because of the fine particles that we have and eutrophication of surface waters, especially marine estuaries because of the atmospheric deposition. So the key to more efficient use of manure nutrients is conserving that nitrogen and incorporating it. This was probably not true in the 90s when the commercial fertilizers were so inexpensive, but with today's prices of commercial fertilizers, uh, it's typically valuable and it's typically worth it working that manure into the soil and conserving the nitrogen. Phosphorus in the environment. Phosphorus is also an essential element for plants and animals. High phosphorus is generally non-toxic to plants or animals and is relatively immobile in the soil. Phosphorus causes accelerated, accelerated eutrophication, which is the ex excessive growth of algae in aqua and aquatic plants. And it might limit the use of, wa of waters for drinking, fishing, and recreation. Here's a summary of some of the transport factors for nitrogen and phosphorus. As we saw earlier, that nitrogen is going to be taken out by the crop or it might volatilize if we don't incorporate it. And if we over apply manures, we might have issues with nitrogen leaching. With phosphorus, leaching is not a problem because phosphorus typically is attached to the soil particles, but runoff and erosion is the main loss that we may need to deal with phosphorus. In summary, nitrogen and phosphorus containing manure are essential nutrients for crop production. Nitrogen leaching to groundwater and nitrogen volatilization from surface applied manure are key nitrogen losses to the environment. Phosphorus runoff is also an important environmental concern. Again, my name is Jose Hernandez and I am with University of Minnesota Extension and here's my contact information in case that you have any questions. Thank you.